a good preacher friend. Uh, he's in heaven tonight. He won my dad and my mom to the Lord. He's responsible for, uh, for me being saved tonight. And that's Preacher Stansel. Uh, he was the pastor of Faith Baptist Church for almost 50 years there in Bass, South Carolina. He had a son. He had several children. He had a son. And he trained him the right way. He trained him in the King James Bible. He trained him to be uh, a responsible Christian. He trained him in the Word of God. He grew up in the church and the youth ministry and so forth. And he grew up, but he went astray. He robbed a bank. He robbed a bank in the later on years in life, and they killed him. Did he come back? No, he did not. Did did they train him in the correct way? Yes, they did. I know the I know the parents. I know the wife. I know the husband. I, I know that they trained this young boy, the other children, in the right way. But this one boy made a choice. It was his choice to go astray, to leave what their mom and dad taught them. He uh, left what uh, the Word of God says. He they left God's will. He got into the flesh. He got into the wrong crowd. But whatever he did. But he went astray, and when he went astray, long enough and far enough, he did never return. He never returned. He died in sin. Now, if he was saved, he went to heaven. No doubt about it. That, that didn't change. But he died in sin, died robbing a bank, and they shot him down and killed him. Shot him down and killed him. Wow, his dad's a pastor for 50-something years, almost 50-something years. Now, that's just a couple of examples of preachers. Preacher children all over this uh, nation have gone astray, have uh, have uh, fallen into sin, got pregnant, uh, you know, shacking up in drugs in the in the jailhouse. It's all over. It's all over. I won't name no names, but I, I know something right around here. I know something right around here. I know some in Asheville. I know some down in South Carolina. I know some in Georgia. I know down through history and um, great preachers of the time they've had children to go astray. And to get out of God's will and never to return to what they were taught in the Word of God. This verse undoubtedly is not a promise. It is a principle. It is a principle. Adam's son. If you turn over to Genesis 4. Turn over to Genesis 4 in just a minute. i got several examples. I don't know if I'll cover them all. I might just give you the references. You look them up. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So therefore they knew, they knew that when they had children, uh, Adam and Eve, that, hey, this child is from the Lord. By the way, this is a, I don't know if anybody's ever told you, these are twins. Cain and Abel are twins. You see, there's one, con one conception, and she bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. They're twins. Cain and Abel are twins. It says, And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now why did, why did he do that? He wasn't taught that. The Bible says that uh, Adam and Eve were, they were certainly saved uh, a, a family. They had a um, saved um, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They certainly were not perfect, as we know. But they were saved. They knew that, that when they had these children, that they were from the Lord. And therefore, they brought them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They taught them what they knew. They knew uh, what kind of offering the Lord would um, receive because the Lord gave that example. When they were in the Garden of Eden and was hiding from the Lord, they had sowed thick leaves together. And God says, hey, that ain't enough. Hey, someone's got to die and have a covering and they killed whatever he killed and gave them a covering for their sin and for their bodies. And so therefore, they knew exactly what kind of offering the Lord would handle. Not fig leaves, not fruit from the ground, not potatoes and onions and carrots, but there had to be an offering that had to, uh, had to be a sacrifice. And in verse 5, let's see, in verse 4, and Abel, he also brought uh, of the firstlings of his flock a little sheep, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You'll think the Lord's respect to a person there. It says it very plain. And But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. He didn't respect Cain or his offering. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why, why, why gave Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? The Lord saying, hey, you know what's right. 
Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? And if thou doest not, uh, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. See, he could have, he had an opportunity. The Lord gave him an opportunity to say, hey, you know what's right. You know what kind of offering I want. You've been taught by your parents. You've been brought up the right way. You've been brought up in a Christian home, so to speak. And they've taught you what I will excel and what I won't excel. Cain won't do it his own way, which represents a work salvation and not a grace salvation through faith. And therefore, he got very angry because God uh, had respect unto uh, Abel's offering and not his. But he disobeyed his parents and went his own direction and tried to add works to his salvation, which is where all uh, religions come from. And all most denominations they have a work salvation, and it comes from Cain. And therefore Cain decided to depart from his parents and from what they had taught him. And therefore he had an opportunity to repent and make it right. But instead he got angry and he hated his brother, rose up while they was in the field and murdered him. And murdered him. And God cursed him and put a mark on him. And as far as we know, Cain never turned. Cain never turned. Now there's a, one example in the Word of God where we see that there was godly parents and yet they had children that were raised in the right kind of way. We can talk about Noah. We can talk about Noah. Look over at Genesis chapter 9, just a couple of pages. Genesis chapter 9. This is after they had gotten off the ark and it says in verse 1, God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now that's what they're supposed to be doing. Now, over in verse 20, verse 20 I believe it is, Noah began to be a husband. He planted a vineyard. God didn't tell him to go plant anything. But he did. He drank of the wine, got drunk, and was drunken. He was uncovered within his tent, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon um, both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. And he has been cursed all through the centuries. In my opinion, this is what most people believe. This is what I feel. This is what he's teaching. This is a homosexual act that Ham committed on his father. You say, how did he know? I don't know if he was half, a, half into it or half out of it. Whenever he was drunk, he knew who it was. And that undoubtedly something had taken place. Undoubtedly God knew it for sure because he cursed Ham and made him a servant of servants. And the black man, in my opinion, is Ham. That's what Ham is. He's the black race. And he has been cursed in my opinion, from all of uh, eternity because of his homosexual activity. If you don't believe homosexual, uh, uh, homosexuality or sodomite or sodomy is a sin right here is very plainly, in my opinion, to a Bible believer, I believe it is, that this is what he's talking about. Is a servant of servants shall be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, uh, the Lord God of Shem. Shem is the Shemites, uh, God's children, uh, whether they were born through Sarah or... Um, uh, I can't remember her name all of a sudden, uh, but uh, his his wife's um, handmaid, um, Hagar, I believe it was, Hagar, and uh, and that's who they are, and God shall enlarge Japheth. Well, that's us, that's the white man, that's the white people, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and that's what we do, isn't that what we do today? How many times have we gone to the gas pump this past two, three weeks? We're dwelling in their tents, they're controlling us, they build them, and we live off of them, and Cana shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. All the days were over 950 years, and he died. Well, this here is again, Noah was a righteous man. He walked with God. When no one else walked with God, God said, this is a righteous man. That's what it says over, uh, I believe it's over there in chapter 6, in verse uh, 8. It says that, uh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These, uh, and then he goes on, says these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah 
walk with God. You know what? These three boys had three wives. They had three wives. Don't you think Ham knew better than be messing around with his daddy? He had a wife. He knew, he knew what the wife was for. He knew what that was for. No, I mean, that's the only thing she's for. Don't send me no emails, no man. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. But they were supposed to replenish the earth with their wives. Very plain here. Noah was a godly man. His wife was a godly man. His children was raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They were taught right. They were taught uh, to do what God told them to do. They were living righteous. They were living just lives. And yet, Ham went astray. And from that point on in the Bible, you don't hear nothing good about him. You don't hear it. What about David's son, Ammon? And I'm not going to turn there. Turn it. I'll just give you the reference. 2 Samuel 13. You read that whole chapter. About David's um, son, Ammon, who took his uncle's um, um, daughter and, and raped her. And raped her. Now, David was a man after God's own heart. We know that. He wrote the Psalms and, 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 and so forth. And he was a man that saw God. Was he a perfect man? No. No parent here, no parents ever born, no Christian parent is a, Christ, is a perfect parent. I'm not going to have it. Don't have them. If anybody had a chance, it was Adam and Eve and they messed it up. But David was a godly man who certainly taught his children right. Now as two examples, Solomon was, a, <clears throat> was one of his children as well. He went astray, but in the end of his life, he turned around and got right with God because we have that evidence because he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes that was written at the end of his life. So we know that Solomon turned. He did repent. He was the prodigal son that went astray, went chasing after women and, and the things of this world and pleasures and wines and all that. But he turned and he repented. But Ammon, he was also David's son. You don't hear much about him. You know why? Because he's a reprobate. He didn't repent of his sin. He raped his, you say his cousin, his cousin. And God judged him. And he died. You don't hear much more about him. He never repented. He never turned from his sin. Is that what he's trying to say? That every prodigal son does not come home. Or prodigal daughter. What about Samuel? Samuel was a godly man. He was a prophet of God. He had three wicked sons. They certainly were taught right. They certainly was raised right, but they went astray. Even the nation didn't want them because they were so wicked. They said, give us a king. And that's where Saul came into play. Well, with all that said, <clears throat> Proverbs, starting in chapter 1 through 9, are the instructions, as I've told you before, of Solomon. Starting in chapter 10 through 24 are the Proverbs of Solomon. You turn over to chapter 10, you'll see that. That's where the Proverbs start. It says the Proverbs of Solomon. You say, well, what about Proverbs chapter 1 1, where it says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel? That's saying, that's talking about the title of the book as a whole, they are the Proverbs. But chapters 1 through 9 are the instructions. You look at the first chapter there, how many times in the first few verses talking about instruction, instruction, instruction. Look over at chapter 1. It even addresses who he's writing to, which is Rehoboam. In verse 8, my son, where he starts giving instruction to his son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. And he cut it there. Right? The first nine books is talking about instruction. No, let me tell you what I meant. Let me flip that switch again. In chapter 10 through 24 is talking about Proverbs, which are principles. Principles. These are not promises. Well, oh yeah, there's promises. Yeah. What about the great promises found in the instructions found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust the Lord with all thy heart, and not thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall.